Welcome to the Inspiring Tech Leaders podcast with me, Dave Roberts. As part of the Stantech.io podcast series, I recently had the pleasure to speak with Corey Clothier and Murray France Lauren from Stantec about how they're helping clients find their autonomous vehicle path and how new mobility is shaping our future. In this episode, we discuss the challenges and opportunities associated with integrating autonomous vehicle solutions and provide a peek into the future of how they see the technology shaping. Many thanks again to Stantec for allowing me to share this insightful podcast with the Inspiring Tech Leaders audience. I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Stantec.io podcast, where we speak to our scientists, designers, engineers, and architects who are working with our digital practice teams to develop creative, technology-forward approaches that accelerate and improve our ability to solve the most difficult challenges facing our clients, communities, and industries. I'm Dave Roberts, and on today's episode, we feature Corey Clothier and Marie France Lauren. Curry and Marie France, both directors of Generation AV, which is Stantec's autonomous mobility consulting service. Curry is based out of our Tampa office in Florida in the US, and Marie France is in our Montreal office in Canada. They will talk today about how they're helping our clients make informed decisions and finding the best autonomous vehicle solution for their environment. Welcome to the podcast, Marie France and Curry. Thank you. It's Thank fun. You. It's exciting to be here. So let's start off by learning a little bit more about you both. Corey, how long have you been with Stantec and what's your AV background? Uh, I've been with Stantec for about two years. I did some consulting for a couple of years prior to that. Um, sometimes they would, Stantec would give me a call if they had some autonomous vehicle work and they needed a subject matter expert. And then we started brainstorming of how we could build an autonomous vehicle um, consulting practice within Stantec, what that would look like. And so what... I started full time. Yeah, it was it was probably two two and a half years ago, something like that. And my my background in autonomous vehicles is I started as a consultant with the U.S. Department of Defense and their research and development organization that was focused on ground autonomous vehicles. So my first project it was early two thousand nine to help them build a long term. Um, strategic plan of R&D investment in autonomous vehicles. And it didn't take me very long before I was hooked. And that was it. That's that's all I've been doing since those early days, 2009. And I worked with them for about six and a half years. And then I've worked with multiple startups, uh, autonomous vehicle startups. I um, have helped build multiple autonomous vehicles. And then I've, I've really worked a lot of projects, Dubai, Europe, UK, all over North America, of um, a lot of pilot projects, a lot of strategic projects, helping to just move this technology forward and towards commercialization and adoption. That's excellent, Corey, and very impressive. And Mary France, what is your AV background? Uh, so my background is in technology and kind of being the translator between the uh, the complicated or what seems to be complicated technology and uh, the people to make sure that we can accelerate the deployment of that technology. So I started in 2016 with AV projects and just like Corey, I fell in love with the entire ecosystem and the entire technology and seeing how we can make the world a better place or how that technology can actually mitigate some of the challenges that we are facing in our communities right now. I've worked uh, on most of the project that happened in Canada over the last seven years. And I've been with Stantec for just under two years now. And every day is a new day and every day it's a new project. And I just totally love what I'm doing. Amazing. Another great career background story. Thanks for sharing that, Marie France. So, Corey, let me come to you next. What was the motivation for starting Generation AV and why are you personally focused on accelerating autonomy? Oh, great questions. I'll, I'll start with the second question first because that, that'll kind of lead into why we, we started Generation AV. So once I started working with the Department of Defense, I, there was multiple things that, that were happening. The Department of Defense was looking aggressively at autonomous vehicles in the first phase really to promote safety. Um, they they had, just like the, the entire world, um, traffic accidents, 
is a leading cause of injury and fatalities, um, even in the Department of Defense. I mean, the Department of Defense is really a, just a massive logistics um, agency. They have to move stuff, people and goods all over the world, right? And traffic accidents and fatalities is just a major issue. So that was that was one of their um, kind of guiding principles of why they were doing this, you know, why they were investing. And that kind of got me hooked. And then learning about the um, more on the civilian side of the, it's really a, a global issue of, of traffic safety. And you know, we just live with it. We just, you know, in the U.S., we're around 40,000 uh, deaths per year, every year. And it, it's a crazy number. And it, early, like 2009, 2010, it was kind of interesting because the the traffic fatalities were starting to decrease and they, we were, I think we were in that high 30s, but it was really great to see a downward trend in accidents and fatalities. But in the last couple of years, it's going back up again. And it, it's pretty fascinating. One of the primary causes is uh, distracted driving and people texting and looking at their phones while they're driving. And autonomy is going to solve that. But then there's other things like, you know, I, I had long commutes when I lived in, you know, where when I was starting my consulting, I lived in Michigan. So I had long commutes, a lot of congestion, and just thinking about this future world where that wouldn't <laughs> be the reality anymore, where autonomous vehicles could actually uh, fix the, the, the challenge of accidents, and they could fix congestion, and it could help us you know, create a more sustainable earth and all of those things. But then we compound it with just the amazing business opportunity. As you know, some folks were referring to, you know, kind of this autonomous push is almost like the, the next internet. It's going to have that type of impact. And then you, you see the billions and billions of dollars being invested by autonomous vehicle OEMs and the automotive and trucking OEMs around the world. And you, you see that this is a, just a massive shift in our transportation. And, and the, all of that stuff just inspired me, motivated me, wanted me to help. And as we started to look at deployment of autonomous vehicles and started to actually get them out on the roads and onto the campuses and, and start applying them, we, you know, we had to learn as we learn as we go. And an autonomous vehicle system is wildly different than what we're used to. You know, it's a robotic system. And so we started understanding what we had to do to effectively plan for and deploy autonomous vehicles. And that's where, you know, I started creating partnerships and tools and processes to help facilitate that. And it wasn't my foresight and brilliance that did it. It was, you know, rolling up our sleeves and just figuring it out as we went, went along. And and so that's what I was doing independently and what I was supporting Stantec with. And I had this little micro model. It, it was actually my daughter and I as a two person consulting team. And then I would interact with people like Marie France and t different projects and some of the other team members on Generation AB. And it was brainstormed with the leadership at Stantec, including Stu Lerner, our, our COO, North American COO, and really looking at, you know, can we take this little micro model and, you know, expand it globally through Stantec? And that was kind of the, the genesis and the, the vision. And then when Marshall Davert started the innovation group at Stantec, it seemed like a a really nice fit. Like that would be a great home for us to can create this almost internal startup called Generation AV, and um, with the intent to kind of take the lead globally um, for autonomous vehicle planning and deployment. So I know that's a very long answer, but that's my story. It's such exciting technology to be involved in at this critical time. So Mary Front, can I ask, why is Accelerating Autonomy the Generation AV tagline? And can you tell me what this means and why it's so important? It is important because like Corey was saying, there, there's a lot of element that needs to be considered when you do an AV project. And um, what we're seeing in the market right now is that the, some of um, the clients or some of the people that are open who have te technology to be deployed on their on their land or on their territory, they find a solution and then they try to find a problem that the solution will fit in instead of going from the vision that they have and trying to find the best solution that fits them. And really, Gen AV is 
going to meet with those clients, going to meet with um, private, public, or whoever clients is interested with AV. And we have that conversation with them where it's start with your needs, start with the challenge that you have, start with uh, a smaller type of project that you can grow over time, get familiarized with the technology, understand how it works, educate your stakeholder. So there, there's many different elements that we are looking in right now and the acceleration might not happen it won't happen overnight that's for sure but there's so many elements that need to be planned and looked at and um so many learning learning curves that needs to be a part of the av deployment that's really what we are doing a lot right now so we do have clients or um people that come to us and they want to have a full deployment but it it's also about how do we prepare for the future? How do we um, look at what we are doing um, and try to do it differently when it comes down to your master planning or your transportation planning? It, it's not about just redoing the same thing as we've been doing it for the last 30 years, but it's about where do you want to be in 5, 10, 20 years from now? So it's um, the, the intent of accelerating the, the model that we have to accelerate deployment of autonomous vehicle technology comes from different angle where we see um, we really see a gap in the market right now on the understanding and on the understanding of the technology itself, but also the understanding on how um, how to do it and how to make it come to life. And that that what Corey was doing on a micro level with his previous experience. That's what I was doing on tiny micro level before that too and now we have a team of 12 people that have been doing that in individually and now we work all together to really take it to a larger scale and and take it to, I, I keep saying that when it comes down to av technology it's like a tsunami so you have two choices you get hit by the wave or you start uh, learning how to surf so we're giving surfing lesson right now oh, i love the analogy that's great so Corey. What is the value that we can provide to clients? We can help them deploy autonomous vehicles smarter. But what we do is we, we save them time and money. And ultimately, what we can do is help them improve efficiency and safety. So those are just kind of the, the simple buzzwords. But how we do that and some client feedback that we receive. And you know, if we get really specific, we, we work with this kind of large client. We're, I think, on our third project. We're, we're working towards our fourth with them. And they were out kind of scouting technology. They had an idea, like Marie France was alluding to, is they have a vision for something that they want to deploy, and then they, they try to go find an autonomous vehicle that, that fits. And so they were doing research for about four months. And um, I met with their leader. We spoke for probably 30 minutes. And then they hired us. <laughs> And what he said was, he goes, you know, if I'm honest, I think I learned more in 30 minutes than I have in the last four months doing the research um, on my own. But we also, when I talk about safety, I mean, safety is critical, obviously, but there are very few tools or methods or processes to assess and verify safety. Well, that's one of the things that we have in our toolkit, is we have a, a holistic safety assessment and cybersecurity assessment. And that's really starting to take off. Um, we're working with a truck, couple trucking companies on that and, and uh, providing safety assessments. So there, our, our value really is that, is that we're saving them time, we're giving them information based on experience, and it's also very holistic. You know, when they go out and they talk to an autonomous vehicle company, they get one little sliver of of data, that, you know, from that autonomy autonomous vehicle's perspective versus you know, we've actually potentially probably, probably worked with that company, helped them deploy, have, you know, learned in the field, learned in the trenches with them. And we probably have a little bit different perspective of the capabilities that they have. And um, we can share that with our clients. So it's, hopefully that makes sense. Absolutely. That makes so much sense and adds value to our clients. So Mary France, when we talk about AVs, what's some of the biggest challenges you've encountered? But I would say that one of the biggest challenges that we have right now is uh, that people only know what they know in the market. So there's a, a kind of a research in the market to go through the traditional 
RFP or RFI process to get the information on what they were looking to achieve. But there's there's not a lot of clarity on what is available in the market right now. So when you think of the, the Gen AV team, we do that from morning to night. So we are totally emergent AV um, technology and AV capacity. And we talk with partners and we talk with clients and potential clients on a regular basis to make sure that we are up to date on everything that is happening, what the planning is for those technology provider and what are the needs uh, in the market. And I think that when you try to to go through a traditional process of just asking for a technology without knowing exactly what you're looking for within that technology, there's a kind of a, a disconnect there. And that is not beneficial for the market at this point, just because they go with what they know. So the education part and really making sure that everyone is aware of what's happening and how it's happening is definitely something that, uh, for me, is one of the biggest challenges that we see in the market. And Corey, what are your thoughts? There's about a dozen questions that we get, the same type of questions all the time. And some of them are kind of related to the capabilities of the technology. We heard this, is this true, that kind of thing. And what we focus on is what's called level four autonomy, which is essentially an autonomous vehicle that can operate on its own without human intervention within the vehicle itself. There will be human uh, supervision, usually at a remote level. Think of the kind of air traffic control for autonomous ground vehicles. So that that's kind of level four, where there's no expectation that a human is going to take over the driving functions. So those are the things that we really try hard to help our clients with, and we spend a lot of time on. <laughs> um, and so, and then and then there's some there's regulatory frameworks that are ambiguous or they're non-existent or they're not consistent. There's no standards in, in that side. There's no standards in safety. So we're all inventing this as an industry um, as we go, as we're starting to deploy. But you know, th- those are kind of interesting challenges. And then the other one that Marie France also was kind of mentioning was this is really a systems engineering deployment and it's wildly different. You know, it, People that are currently in charge of transportation, whether it's public or private, you know, they have generations of doing business kind of the same way. And, you know, they buy a bus or they buy vehicles. They know how to deploy them. They know how to do the risk analysis. Autonomous vehicles are wildly different in almost every category. The way we we do risk analysis for an autonomous vehicle, how we have to use data, how we can use that same risk analysis and the data to actually train the autonomous vehicle. It's, you know, it's really a systems engineering approach of robotic system that is going to be deployed in a campus or on, on public streets. So those those types of things. And but it, it really is just kind of a reinforcement of what um, Murray France said is kind of we're, we're challenged with the old ways. And uh, but that's OK. <laughs> that's that's what we're here to do is educate, inform and help our clients along that path. Excellent. So can you provide some examples of how we've helped clients navigate their AV journey? Yeah, we've got, we've got quite a few. <laughs> like I said, we've, we've participated in over 60 projects as a team. So, you know, the simple ones are things like, are like Marie France said, the, the traditional way to kind of deploy an RFP or an RFI. And you know, if we're looking at something as simple as an RFP, we we help clients write those RFPs and help them understand the require how to write requirements for autonomous vehicles. So that that's fairly common. But the technical requirements for the vehicle itself, the requirements for the operations, the requirements for safety verification, et cetera, et cetera, all of all of those things. Things like an RFI. I I was just trying to talk talk a client out of publishing an RFI, a request for information, because our experience is it takes weeks, if not months, to to write the RFI, get it published and promoted publicly, to get the responses back, to evaluate the responses. And my argument was, you know, this may take you three months. It may cost you, you know, X number of dollars, usually well into the six figures, and you're going to get probably somewhere between 20 and 40% of the information that you want. 
versus we have invested in a really comprehensive database of all of the autonomous vehicle technology and we've worked with the actual autonomous vehicle developers to make sure the data is accurate and we can give them a full report in a couple of weeks for a fraction of the cost so that that's another way we we've been helping quite a bit and then the last example that's a little bit different is we're working on a large design project, Stantec is, and it's a very collaborative project with many Stantec groups all, all collaborating and chipping in. But our team is helping with the, the design to ensure that autonomous vehicles can operate efficiently and safely within this campus. And it's a large campus. It's like five miles end to end. It's really, really impressive. But they want to make sure that as autonomous, and it's a, it's a distribution logistics campus. So as autonomous trucking um, comes into commercial deployment and um, first and last mile delivery and you know all of these other types of autonomous applications, as they come online, they wanna make this sure this campus is, will function efficiently and hopefully be able to evolve with the technology. So that's something that we're helping them with. It's it, that's a pretty cool project. And I would like to add to that, that when it comes down to example and things that we do with clients, um, I just yesterday I, I, I had another conversation like that, but some of the, the, the people come to us and they ask about AV because they have a preconceived idea of what AV is. And they saw a video with a cute little shuttle for people movement. And they <laughs> ask us if we can do that. And then you start asking questions. You're like, okay, but like the, the example I can give you, I was talking with a client that says, I want to have a shuttle on the main street in my hometown. And I mm -hmm. said, okay, but what is the challenge? And they said, traffic. I'm like, okay, but what is causing traffic? They're like vehicle. I'm like, okay, what type of vehicle? like delivery like okay but why do you want to move people with an av shuttle when the challenge comes from delivery here are other solutions you can use on the delivery side you can use a sidewalk robot you can use a smaller type of vehicle to do the delivery you can use drones like sky's the limit think about it focus on delivery instead of focusing on the cute little shuttle that you saw so the, Again, humans are humans and they only know what they know. And because they never heard about the other type of technology or they were not exposed to it, all they think is the one solution that they want to have. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't put my name on any project if it doesn't bring a real added value to the clients. I, I'm not doing anything because it's new and shiny and it's cool. I'm doing something because it brings added value to you. So I will always ask those questions of what is the real challenge that you want to mitigate and what are you looking to do with it? And that will bring a vision to the, the, the people that we are talking to, to the organization to say, oh, there's other solution. Because yes, when, it, when we think of AV, it could be an autonomous wheelchair, it could be an autonomous people mover, it could be an autonomous um, shuttle and a drone, it could be underground, underwater, in so many different sectors. So it's it's really sky's the limit. We're writing the book about AV right now, and it's the time to be creative, start with the challenge, and then find the solution that fits with it. It really is such an exciting time to be involved in AV. Mary France, what do you think the AV landscape will look like over the next five to 10 years? That's a good question. Uh, there's, there's a lot of elements that will make it go faster or slower. Uh, as Corey mentioned, I think that the policy part will play a big role in how it's going to de deploy and evolve in the next couple of years. I, I understand that safety is first, that we need to make sure that what is being done is being to another level of safety because we don't want to face any hiccups into all any of those projects. But what I would say is that the policymaker and the governments will have to look into their agility and their flexibility opportunity or desired, because at the end of the day, that's going to have a, a huge impact on how everything unfolds. And it, I understand that the technology is moving faster than the policymakers right now, but we need to make sure that it's the communities and 
the people that are asking for the solution and not just the, the technology provider that push for their own solution. So again, I, I always bring it back to the, the vision that we have, we as a community, we as a, a citizen, um, and not just as what is available out there. So I think that with the new generation coming up, I look at my kids and my daughter who's 10 doesn't want to drive. She, she thinks she's going to have an AV in the driveway and that she's going to be able to go anywhere. She's 10, so we still have some time to make that happen for her. But uh, the, I think it's going to go faster and faster. And I think that some of the, the, the sectors such as freight will be something that will be coming way faster than we are thinking about it right now. Why? Because there's a, a shortage of truck drivers or a shortage of employees in general. And those will be the market that will emerge uh, quicker than the other. And what about you, Corey? What do you think the landscape will look like in the next 10 years? So based on the projects that we are working on, the clients we're working with, what we're, we're seeing really aggressively come um, to the market is logistics applications. So we're going to, I really think within 10 years, it'll be common to see autonomous trucks on the highways. And maybe even in that uh, middle mile application as well, we're going to see more kind of delivery robots, especially like the sidewalk delivery robots on a campus with it or within a city center. Um, there are a number of companies that are working on buses, so essentially mass transit, whether it's a you know small to mid-sized shuttle or even a full-size bus. I believe within 10 years that that's going to be common. You know, if we ride on a city bus or it's a maybe it's a tram at a campus like an amusement park, totally could be without a driver or you know without an without a human driver, I should say. And the thing that'll probably be lagging, but we'll, we'll I think we'll start to see is more um, of what we're thinking about is our our own cars that'll be autonomous. I think we're just going to start to see that through the advancements in kind of robo taxis or on-demand um, services like Lyft and Uber and those those types of things that you know, Waymo and many of the automotive companies, the large automotive OEMs, are working on now. So I think those are going to be just coming online, um, but those other more kind of industrial and mass transit, I think those we'll see those first. And I think that they're going to be fairly common in 10 years. That we'll, we'll be seeing those pretty much all over the world. So, Corey, how would you summarize the value of Generation AV? We can help our clients plan for um, autonomy now. We can help them wherever they are within their journey, whether it's just starting to think about it or they're kind of seasoned veterans with pilots and they're looking to scale those pilots anywhere along that full spectrum we can assist them we can speed up their process make it more efficient while being more comprehensive taking a systems engineering approach to it ultimately saving them money and then what everybody wants is also a safer deployment so we we can save you time money and make it safer that's probably the the Really crisp summary sentence. That's a great summary. So, Marie France, if I wanted to learn more about Generation AV, what should I do next? So, Generation AV has a brand new website where we have all the information on uh, the projects we're working on and also the the process and the methodology that we've put together. So, stentechgenerationav.com. And uh, we also have the, um, the learning center that is there that can educate people. And please reach out to us. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to both of you today about Generation AB and the fantastic insights around the acceleration of autonomy within our communities. Thank you once again for being part of the Stantec.io podcast. Thank you, you so much. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you for listening to the Stantec.io podcast. If you've enjoyed listening, please tune in to future episodes where we'll continue to explore how digital solutions are shaping our world. In the meantime, you can also visit our website at www.stantech.io for further information. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and stay tuned for more inspiring tech leaders.